Okay, um, this is weird. It has been probably since September that I actually sat down and filmed a video. So this is really weird for me. So, hi, I'm kind of back, I think, I hope, hopefully. Um, if you haven't watched any of my mobile live streams, you wouldn't know, but I have pink hair now. I actually got pink hair for the first time in November and I was kind of half re-dyeing it, not dyeing, recoloring it with um, this Moroccan oil color depositing conditioner. It didn't work out super well, like it worked out all right, but it wasn't the best. And then I decided to go for like hot pink during quarantine and I'm loving it. Speaking of quarantine, I know you guys are probably all super bored right now, which is why I decided to make this video. Just in case you wanted some suggestions or something of things to watch during quarantine, I know not everybody has the same taste as me, so, Please don't yell at me for my opinions in the comments, just, okay? But yeah, wow, lots of things have changed. Lots of things have changed in the world, in my personal life. Like, you know, I have pink hair. I'm not single anymore, so that's another thing. <laughs> Haven't been since December. But yeah, quarantine's been interesting. I'm 100% self-isolating, like I do not go out anywhere. And I haven't for over a month now, so it's really weird. I'm also filming not wearing a bra because I just don't care. So sit back, relax during this quarantine time, grab a snack, grab a drink if you would like, and we are going to go over the things that I watched during quarantine. Well, so far in quarantine. I shouldn't say everything I've watched in quarantine because for sure is not everything that I have watched. I'm sure I'll watch a lot more. Um, if you guys want a part two though, let me know. Before I get into the bulk of the video telling you guys what I watched during quarantine, please, 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 if you like me, if you want to see a little bit more of my face, like and subscribe. I would love to have you guys here. So more so the subscribe, but definitely like too. It helps. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. So first we are going to go through the movies that I watched so far during quarantine. The first movie that I watched is Gerald's Game, which is available at least on Canadian Netflix. I'm not sure if it's available on your Netflix, but I would check. It's a Netflix original. I think, so you should watch it. So initially I thought it was a really boring movie. It was super slow. It didn't captivate me until like further than like halfway through the movie. I was not interested whatsoever until one moment and it clicked. Joke's game is about a woman whose husband dies of a heart attack while she is handcuffed to a bed and following the subsequent realization that she is trapped with little hope of rescue begins to let the voices inside her head take over. So this is based on a Stephen King, I don't know if it's a novella or a novel, and that's actually something that I haven't read by Stephen King, which I kind of want to now. Um, again, I didn't love the movie by any means, but it's something that I think that I could get into reading. I feel like it would be more captivating as a book than a movie. So I gave this a six out of 10. Oh yeah, and I should say, I wasn't captivated, which made me often confused, like I had no idea what was happening. There was one scene in the movie, which if you've seen the movie, you know what scene I'm talking about, that is like perfect. The perfect amount of gore, it finally caught my attention, and I was like hooked from then on, and then the ending was confusing. But then after I read a bunch of Reddit posts, I understood, but it was a lot. That movie was just a lot, so yeah, like I said, Six out of 10. And the second movie I watched is Banana Split. I actually rented it the day that it came out. I rented it off of Apple TV. I don't remember how much it was, but if you can rent it off of something, go ahead, it is amazing. After a messy breakup with her high school boyfriend, April strikes up an unexpected friendship with his new girlfriend, Clara. If you love those cheesy, early adulthood, rom-com, teenage comedy, that's usually found on Netflix. And I'm not talking about The Kissing Booth because that movie is genuinely horrendous. <laughs> you will absolutely adore Banana Split. It was like the perfect amount of funny, the perfect mixture of like a friendship story, romance, and just pure hilarity. I gave Banana Split a 10 out of 10. I genuinely really loved that movie. I couldn't find a single thing that I didn't like about it. The next movie I watched was Charlie's Angels from 2019. A team of female private agents popularly known as Charlie's Angels are tasked by their mysterious boss to expose an international conspiracy to weaponize an energy conservation device. I'm gonna be honest and say that I don't really understand why people hate this movie so much. Like, it's not the exact same as the older Charlie's Angels movies, but it was still a really good movie, especially for someone who didn't love the old movies, wasn't like captivated by the old movies, especially since I don't think I've seen them since I was like a child. Also, I definitely didn't, did not just watch this movie because of Kristen Stewart. 
I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's comedic, has some great action scenes, and just the right amount of mystery to keep you guessing. I gave Charlie's Angels an 8 out of 10. Like I said, not everybody's gonna agree with me. I know that there's a lot of people who hate this movie, but I liked it. Mainly because of Kristen Stewart. Hello? The next movie that I watched was Prisoners, um, which came out in 2013. When the police take time to find Keller Dover's daughter and her friend, he decides to go on a search himself. His desperation leads him closer to finding the truth and also jeopardizes his own life. I actually only watched this movie because I saw it in a recommendation video from a girl that I've been obsessed with lately on YouTube. Her name is Spooky Astronauts. I will link her video down below and actually put it in the cards because it was so good. Cards. Cards? I'll do both. I'll link that video up here in the cards if you wanna go watch it. Just check out her channel, she is amazing. She mainly covers horror movies and she's just amazing. She's Australian too, so like you just wanna keep listening to her constantly, so good. Prisoners was genuinely captivating from the very beginning of the movie to the very end of the movie. It exceeded my expectations and when I saw Spooky Astronauts video, I could not have predicted everything that I saw in that movie. Like, I could not predict watching Pure Perfection. <laughs> I loved it. I had anxiety watching it. I cried. I was actually genuinely a little scared. And I don't get scared during movies, let me tell ya. If you want a good horror thriller movie, this is the one to watch. And I gave Prisoners a 10 out of 10. Like I said, it was so good from beginning to end. Next on the list is the 2005 movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And you're probably thinking, Abby, you've never seen The Exorcism of Emily Rose? And I'm here to tell you that, yes, I watched it when I was 12 and the movie came out. And this is just a rewatch because I did not remember anything about this movie. Reverend Moore performs an exorcism on a girl believed to be possessed by demons. The prosecutor argues that the girl suffered from schizophrenia, but Moore's defense lawyer has a different opinion. So yeah, like I said, this was a rewatch. I did watch it when it came out on DVD when I was like 12 or 13 because it came out, I don't know when the DVD came out, but the movie was released in 2005 and I was 12. Um, so I watched it right when it came out on DVD with my uncle who, was terrified of the movie. <laughs> and like I said, I did not remember a single thing about this movie. I didn't remember that the majority of the story was based around a court case. I, in my brain, I heard the exorcism of Emily Rose and I thought it was all just about the exorcism and watching her during this exorcism. And I kind of forgot the whole court case thing, which I think is why it's not as high on my scale of like one to 10. Because when I'm watching a horror film based on possession, that's what I wanna see. I wanna see the possession and I wanna see the exorcism, how they get rid of the demon, but I wanna see the whole story. And since this was mainly based on the court case, it just didn't catch my interest as much. So yeah, it felt unsatisfying for me to go in expecting a horror movie about a possession and watching a court case. And I know that I should have went online to like read a synopsis before I went back and watched it, but it was just like a spur of the moment thing. My dad and I were like, let's watch a horror movie and we decided to watch that. But yeah, I give The Exorcism of Emily Rose a six out of 10. The next movie that I watched was the Disney movie Onward, the day it came onto Disney Plus. Teenage elf brothers Ian and Barley embark on a magical quest to spend one more day with their late father. Like any good adventure, their journey is filled with cryptic maps, impossible obstacles, and unimaginable discoveries. But when dear mom finds out her sons are missing, she teams up with the legendary Manticore to bring her beloved boys back home. So this came out April 1st. I think it was April 1st. Yeah, like I said, watched it the first day it was out on Disney Plus. And when they tell you to bring tissues to watch this movie, they mean bring the entire box. I know that it is not on every single country's Disney Plus yet. Um, I know that it is here in Canada, so if you do have it on Disney Plus, please go watch it. If you're unable to yet, I am so sorry. Wait until I think it's June or July that it's coming to you, but it's coming and it is so good, so worth the wait. It is the perfect story of adventure, fantasy, and familial love. And if you know Disney at all, you know it's gonna be a tearjerker, especially for me. Bald, like a baby. <laughs> I give Onward an eight out of 10. The next movie I waited so long to watch, months to watch, because nobody wanted to go to the theater to see it with me. The next movie we're talking about 
is the Rise of Skywalker. When it's discovered that the evil Emperor Palpatine did not die at the hands of Darth Vader, the rebels must race against the clock to find out his whereabouts. Finn and Poe lead the resistance to put a stop to the First Order's plans to form a new empire, while Rey anticipates her inevitable confrontation with Kylo Ren. I'm not gonna say much about this movie, other than the fact that I don't understand why people hate this movie so much. Like, it is not my favorite Star Wars film, by any means. However, anything is better than Jar Jar Banks, and I will die on that hill. Like I said, I'm not gonna say much about the movie. Um, I gave it a seven out of 10. I know for me saying like, I don't know why everybody hated it, and then I give it a seven out of 10. I just didn't think it was a perfect movie, but again, I didn't hate it. Also, Kylo Ren is a big bitch. Moving on. The next movie that I watched is Gone, which is from 2012. A woman is convinced her kidnapper has returned when her sister goes missing. Lauren and I watched this movie and she was convinced that we had seen it before or that we went to the theater to see it. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think that I went to see it. Or if I did, I apparently didn't find it that memorable. However, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I'm just going to tell you right now. I think that it may be one of the best like thriller movies that I've seen. It was so good. Me and Lauren were sitting there coming up with all these like conspiracies in our head about who did what and what the ending is gonna be and honestly, so good. So good. Please go watch it. I promise we are almost done with the movies. It's the second last one. Um, the second last movie that I've watched during quarantine is called Antrim. And the plot of Antrim, you can already tell how I feel about the movie. The plot alone just it sold me on the fact that i was not gonna love this movie <laughs> to rescue the soul of their deceased dog a young boy and girl enter a forest and dig a hole to hell i actually only heard of this movie initially through a girl's tiktok because i was scrolling through tiktok and i like horror movie tiktoks all the time and this one popped up um, she said she had to stop watching halfway through the movie because she wanted to go throw up And I have to say while watching this movie the only time that I actually wanted to Stop watching the movie was because I just wanted to stop watching the movie <laughs> Because I didn't like it and because there's a weird animatronic squirrel that is just Really questionable as to why they would put it in there I have to say the best part of this movie was in the last 10 minutes of the movie where I literally had to stop rewind and I openly said out loud was that a penis thankfully the movie was just over an hour um, so I didn't waste too much of my time um, but I'm just gonna say it wasn't good so I only gave it a 3 out of 10 the last movie that I have watched in quarantine is we need to talk about Kevin and wow there's a last name in this plot summary that I have no idea how to say I'm just gonna let you know now. So if I butcher it, I'm very sorry. Eva Catch Dorian is a travel writer slash publisher who gives up her beloved freedom and bohemian lifestyle to have a child with her husband, Franklin. Pregnancy does not seem to agree with Ava, but what's worse, when she does give birth to a baby boy named Kevin, she can't seem to bond with him. When Kevin grows from a fussy, demanding toddler into a sociopathic teen, Eva is forced to deal with the aftermath of her son's horrific act. This movie was a roller coaster. I would never say that it was the most disturbing movie I've ever seen that solely belongs to Cannibal Holocaust because there's actual animal deaths in it and a Serbian film and if you've seen that movie you know exactly why. But this movie was super engaging. The only reason that I actually found out about this movie was because I was watching a video on Antrim. Somebody was talking about the most disturbing video, like how they watched the most disturbing movies. And this was one that was on the list. So I decided to give it a watch. And I knew just from hearing the plot that I was going to be hooked to this movie. And when I say it was a roller coaster, like it was a roller coaster. You are being whipped every which way. While watching this movie, it is a lot. And honestly, the entire movie I was sitting there wondering how this mother wasn't punching her child in the face. And I say that as somebody who would never touch or hurt a child. I literally went to school for child and youth work. I love the kids, but that child was the devil. <laughs> I'm giving We Need to Talk About Kevin a nine out of 10. I think I would have given it a 10 out of 10, if parts of it weren't so confusing, because they do a lot of time jumping, it makes it confusing for me, but I thought that it was really good. Okay, almost done. We are on to TV shows, and I've only watched two TV shows in full during quarantine. I'm sure that you guys can all guess what Netflix documentary I'm about to talk about. What else could I be talking about, guys, other than Tiger King? And literally, the plot summary that is written online 
for Tiger King doesn't even begin to scrape the surface of what Tiger King is. An exploration of big cat breeding and its bizarre underworld populated by eccentric characters. That is very accurate, <laughs> but also not accurate at all. <laughs> this documentary, when I said that Let's Talk About Kevin was a roller coaster, I clearly wasn't thinking about Tiger King because this is the definition of a roller coaster. I first tried to watch and the first episode had me so bored. I was so bored. I was doing other things on my phone because it wasn't like capturing my attention. I had to restart the episode three times because I wasn't paying attention because I was that bored. The premise of the show did sound amazing because I didn't just read that very insignificant plot summary that I just read out to you guys. I read the one on Netflix, um, which definitely dives more into the fact that there was a hit put out on somebody and murder accusations and a bunch of stuff like that. So it sounded amazing, but it started out super slow. And then the first twist slaps you in the face. <laughs> And then it's like they just keep coming. Another twist, another twist, another twist. I would be shocked if you hadn't seen this yet, but if you haven't, go to Netflix. Go watch Tiger King. I promise the first like 20 minutes of the first episode is nothing in comparison to the rest of this documentary. You will be shocked. I also suggest watching it quick because there's like meme after meme after meme online about this show. So things are definitely gonna be ruined for you. Also, I can't stop seeing Carol Baskin. Killed her husband, whacked him. <laughs> and the very last thing, I am leaving this on a very wholesome note that I watched in quarantine so far, is the Imagineering story on Disney+. Plus. An epic in-depth look at the history and creation of the Walt Disney theme parks around the world. And that just says it all. You know why I would love this show. <laughs> it actually just came to Disney Plus this year and if you don't have Disney Plus, get it. Even if you don't love, 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 love Disney like I do, get Disney Plus. It's so good. The Imagineering story was amazing. So amazing. I cried every single episode. The first episode alone made me bawl because they talked about Walt Disney's death and that just gets me every single time. But each episode goes in depth looking at the Imagineering of every single Disney park. It is so amazing to hear people talk about how they came up with specific ideas about the castle or what the tree of life was gonna be or over in, I don't know, Disneyland Paris, how they wanted the inside of the castle to be so grand and like, oh my gosh, it made me just wanna visit every single Disney park. And it's now made me feel that I have to visit every single Disney park in the world during my lifetime. Um, I'm just gonna throw it in here. I forgot to tell you that I rated Tiger King an eight out of 10. The Imagineering story, 10 out of 10. The only thing wrong with the Imagineering story is that there's not more episodes of the Imagineering story for me to watch. Okay, everybody, that is all that I have watched during my quarantine. Honestly, I spent a lot of my day, I'm currently actually reading the book Cujo, I'm playing Animal Crossing, which if you want me to add you, please just let me know, send me your friend code on social media or something, and that will definitely add you. What else have I been doing? Watching a lot of YouTube, just chilling. Yeah, so hopefully I will be making some more videos for you guys while I'm in quarantine. I do have a little bit of surprise, maybe, coming at the beginning of May. That's all, guys. I love you so much. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. What have you guys been watching during quarantine? Maybe you guys can give me some good stuff to watch because I'm kind of in a stump right now. I do have a couple of movies on my watch list on my Amazon Prime, but they're all horror movies or thrillers. So maybe I want something funny, something sad. I don't know. Send me your suggestions. Anyways, guys, I love you so much and I will see you in my next video, which is hopefully next week. <laughs> Bye.